Hey, it's Natasha from YMO Homeschool, and if you're new here, welcome. I'm a homeschooling mom. I have six daughters ranging in age from 2 to 16. The 2 through 15 year olds are homeschooled. And so today, I have a Genesis curriculum unboxing video for you. So I have opened the box, but I actually haven't looked at any of the books. So this is my first time seeing them also. And if you're unfamiliar with what Genesis curriculum is, you've probably heard of Easy Peasy. Genesis curriculum is made by the same lady, Lee Giles, who made Easy Peasy. Genesis curriculum is a completely offline curriculum. It is a family style curriculum. It's generally designed for families who have their um, oldest child in third grade or above. So if you have littler ones, then you might wanna go with easy peasy. But if you have older ones, third grade and above, your oldest is third grade and above, then this would be a great curriculum to use. You can use it with younger ones, especially the math that I'll talk about, but it might be a little bit over their head, and so generally um, it's suggested that you wait until your oldest is in third grade so you can get, you know, the full thing out of it, basically. So you can go to genesiscurriculum.com to view all this. There are four books in the Genesis curriculum. There's Genesis, Exodus, Matthew, and Acts. You can start with Genesis and then do Genesis, Exodus, Matthew, Acts, or you can start with Matthew and do Matthew and Acts and then Genesis, Exodus. So what you shouldn't do is start in Acts or start in Exodus, if that makes sense. So start either with Genesis or Matthew. So I'm going to do a little unboxing and then I'll talk a little bit more about the Genesis curriculum. This will be our third year using the Genesis curriculum. The Genesis curriculum covers pretty much all subjects. So it covers Bible, social studies, science, language arts, and a foreign language, either Hebrew or Greek, depending on if you're doing Genesis and Exodus or Matthew and Acts. So the biblical language uh, languages are included in this. And... Um, you can use the Genesis curriculum and not use the language portion if you don't want to. That's totally fine. So here we have the, this is the curriculum book. Genesis curriculum, the book of Acts. It's very thick, as you can see. So the main lessons in this book, there are 140 main lessons. There's an additional 40 days of projects that you can do to expand this to 180 days. That's especially important if your state requires 180 days of school. Mine doesn't, so it doesn't matter. In fact, we've never done those extra projects at the end of the year, um, but you can do them if you need 180 days. So at the beginning, it gives you a materials list by day. It tells you how to use. So there's Bible, memory verses, language, handwriting, spelling, vocabulary, grammar, Greek, science and social studies, discussion, and writing is what is included. And it gives you some writing instruction, and it gives you some paragraph, essay, outline things here, and an essay editing checklist. And now here we go to day one. And what you do to teach this, you literally open this book and you start reading to your kids. That It's that simple. If you want an open and go curriculum, this is completely open and go. And so it says read Acts 1, 1 to 8. And it has it written here in the book for you. So you don't even need to pull out your Bible. But of course, if you wanted to have your kids read along, you could have them pull out their Bibles and you could take turns reading. You could do it however you want. And then you'll practice the memory verse, and then you'll get into language, and you'll do handwriting, spelling, um, words to know, apostles, convincing, proofs, uh, remotest, um, like the, the word, um, and then, sorry, <laughs> then you will give spelling tips for those words, and then it um, says, like, you can... Uh, the word convincing follows the rule that a C followed by an I or an E has an S sound. How do you spell the ing sound? I-N-G. So it gives little like phonics tips and rules to help with the spelling. The spelling is pulled from the Bible passage that you just read. So it's the vocabulary. The science lesson and social studies lessons are inspired from what you read in the Bible passage. 
Okay, and then it gives a vocabulary word. There's one vocabulary word a day. In this case, it's remote. Um, and it gives you a definition, talks about the part of speech, um, gives an example. Then it goes into the Greek. Then it goes into science. And so, for example, it says the apostles were going to receive power. In the book of Judges in the Old Testament, we read about Samson. He, probably, he was probably an ordinary guy, but the Spirit of God gave him supernatural strength. In Acts, we read that the Holy Spirit will give the apostles power to be witnesses, not power to be strong men. But let's talk today about becoming strong. So you see how she just tied in the science lesson right there with the Bible passage. And then it goes on to talk about that. Um, it talks about a hormone called adrenaline. And here is a little picture here. The adrenal glands. Um, continues on talking about organs. And then at the end of each section, it has a recall section. And it's a recall. What is adrenaline for? What does it do to your body to help you do that? And then it tells you to define cells, hormones, and organs. And then at the end of the science and social studies sections, there's an explore more topic. If you have an older child, um, upper middle school or even high school, you can have them do these explore more topics where they would go out on their own to their computer or encyclopedias or whatever you have on hand and answer these questions. So the question for today's is what are glands? And they could explore that. Then it goes into the social studies lesson. For social studies, we're going to do some really specific lessons related to the scripture reading to understand it better. The first sentence, verses 1 and 2, refer to the first account, literally the first word, um, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so I'm not going to obviously read you the whole lesson, um, but ties everything in. And then it has a discussion question, Jews had nothing to do with the Samaritans. Is there anyone or any people whom you have nothing to do with? Great question. Talk about a great discussion prompt, getting the family really talking and thinking about that. And the, lead, the discussions are completely open-ended like that. It doesn't tell you what you should think or should say or anything like that. It's really to get the dialogue going between you and your kids. And that is why I love this curriculum. Well, there's a lot of thing I love, things I love about it, but that's one of them. Okay, and then the writing, and it says the remotest part of the earth is the farthest place you can get. One place can be remoter than another, but the remotest place is at a greater distance than them all. When we add EST onto an adjective, we call that the superlative. It's the most of whatever it is. Some examples, and then it talks about adding ER. It goes through a lesson. Um, and then um, it tells them to go to writing sentences one page in their workbook and do the worksheet. So every Monday or the first day of every week, if you don't do Monday through Friday, it obviously wouldn't fall on Monday, then you can... Um, you will have a writing worksheet. So there's not a writing worksheet every day of the week, but every first day of the week there's a writing worksheet, if that makes sense. And then you go on to day two. So that's how it works. Now a lot of this you just do orally. So let me show you what else I got here. So, okay, let's see. Okay, so here's the workbook. Okay, this is a student workbook and it has that those writing worksheets I was just telling you about. So here would be their worksheets for that. It has spelling review worksheets in here. It has, um, oh, my kids love this one. It's like Battleship with spelling. That's their favorite. Um, it has grammar review worksheets in here. It has vocabulary review and science review. And social studies review. Just flipping through, and obviously the Greek there. Um, okay, so it's not that thick. They won't have a worksheet every day. That throws some people off. So there is not necessarily a worksheet every day. During review weeks, there is worksheets. Ten, so there's usually the writing worksheet every first day of the week, and then there is. Um, during the review weeks, there is worksheets for all of those reviews. So, um, for example, you would do, I feel like I'm all over the place in this video. So if you get confused, just ask me questions. <laughs> um, you would do five weeks of regular lessons and then you have two review weeks. That's how it goes throughout the entire thing. Five weeks of 
regular lessons, two weeks where you're reviewing everything you've learned, that's when you will be using this the most is during those two weeks. Also during, during those two weeks of review tends to be when the um, a lot of the hands-on stuff is, projects, experiments, that kind of thing. You don't want to skip those review weeks because they're so much fun and you really get to see what they've learned for those last five weeks. So if you were um, a Sabbath schooler, you might have to alter it a little bit, like seven weeks on, one week off or something. But, um, you know, it works really nice to have the five weeks and then the two weeks. So then I also have the copy workbook. This is optional. And this is for your younger ones. So there's also a tracing book if you have really younger ones that they can get. But the copy workbook has... A Bible passage to copy from that day's reading and it also has the vocabulary word for the day the definition and tells you to draw a picture so um, for each vocabulary word and then there's also in these if I can find you an example I'm still finding let me go back to day 26 okay so, day 26 is cut out letters to make spelling words, glue them on the page. Here are some words you could write with the letters proofs, remotest, gazing, burst, share, occupy, for. So these, these review days and the copy work look different than the regular copy work where they're doing copy work because again, this is review. So um, if you have a younger one, I would definitely get this. I would say this is, you know, maybe like second, third grade this is great for. There's also a cursive copy workbook, which is just cursive copy work, like it says. And then the tracing book has all the spelling words that they trace, and it also has the vocabulary. I did not get the tracing book this year because um, I had the tracing book last year, and I felt like my daughter was ready to move on to the regular copy work book this year. This will be my six-year-olds. She's kind of, she tear totters between like a first and second grade level, so um, I'll be using this for her. And the girls I will be doing with this with are first grade, third grade, seventh grade. They're ages six, going to turn seven in November, eight and 12, and she'll turn 13 in October. And then there's the map book, and the map book has color, which is very nice, and the regular curriculum book will tell you go to map book day 24. It'll tell you what to do and when to use this. And then there's the answer book. And so it gives you all the answers for the worksheets in the workbook. And this is very thin. Now, that's like the main Genesis curriculum. The only thing I'm missing here is the cursive copy work books that I don't have yet to show you. But it's just cursive copy work. Okay, then to go along with that, there's something called Mind for Math. And Mind for Math takes that Bible passage and puts it into a math topic. So you have the Mind for Math book, and then you have workbooks to go along with it. So Mind for Math is approximately, approximately grades one through four. There's levels A, B, C, and D. A is grade one, B grade two, C grade three, D grade four. But there's a placement guide. Really look at that just in case. This is not your traditional math program at all you use this all together. So with all your first through fourth graders, you use this all together, but they'll have their own separate workbook. So let me show you how this works. Okay, day one is on measurement, okay? And it takes a passage. The apostles were sent to the remotest parts of the world. Acts one, one to eight, that's where that came from. Then for A, so these are, so if you have any, uh, any kids using A, they're gonna do just this part. Let's measure today. Choose a distance to measure and measure it three different ways. You could walk toe heel and measure how many of your feet is the distance. You could lie down and measure how many use the distance is. You could use any object you have on hand, write down the measurements. Okay, that kid would be done after that. That's all they would do. Now let's say you have a kid also using, uh, using level B. They would do, all your kids would do level A questions. Then the level B students would also do B. It gets more challenging as it goes. Level C kids would do A, B, and C. Level D kids would do A, B, C, and D. So for the older kids, 
it helps work them up to the more advanced topic. So, um, for example, level D is now measure five, those five things to the nearest millimeter or sixteenth of an inch. Each little line on a centimeter ruler is one millimeter. It is, if it is measured, if it measured seven of those lines past the four, you would write, and that shows you, 4.7 centimeters. On an inch ruler, each of those little lines measures 1 16th of an inch. That's a fraction, 1 over 16. Shows you there. You could write the same example like this. Okay, so as you can see at the beginning, they're just getting used to what measurement is, but indeed, it's much more advanced. And so, um, you again, you read what it says to your kids, okay? So there were Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the zealot, and Judas the son of James. How many apostles were there? So they had to count them. Peter's listed first. Where is John listed second? Where is James listed third? Who's listed fifth, eighth, eleventh, okay? So this is talking about ordinal numbers, problem solving, multiplying by eleven, and fractions. So your, your level A kid would be done after that. Your level P, B kid would do that level A, then would do their assignment for level B, and then C kids would do A, B, then C. D kids would do A, B, C, then D. And so I do not have level A and D workbooks here. I have B and C, so I will show you those. So here's day one that I just read you and day two. This is level B, okay? So in contrast, let me show you level C. Here's day one and day two, okay? And let me just flip through level B quickly so you can see. a little faster. So you see they're um, adding and subtracting multi-digit numbers. Money time. You see there's a lot of word problems. But again, the parents walking them through this. This is not a curriculum that you can hand them. This is not independent work. You have to have the teacher book and read them the lesson and do it with them. Roman numerals, okay? So that is B. And then C. Well, it just gets harder each level that you go to. I know I'm going kind of fast here. I just kind of wanted to give you an idea of what this looks like. Okay. Now, it is recommended that you work on math facts mastery in addition to this. There are math facts books that you can purchase. I actually have those. I should have brought them. But, um, or you can use something like extramath.com or just flashcards. But, um... If you have a level A or B student, you would want to work on addition and subtraction facts. If you have a level C or D student, you would want to work on multiplication facts. So that's kind of how that works. So if you have any questions, which I expect you probably will, because that was a lot of information in a short time and probably not the most organized, but um, let me know and I will answer your questions at the back. Well, I will try to at least. At the back, there are lists of all the spelling words all the vocabulary, all the grammar topics, all the Greek, all the science and social studies topics. So science, just to give you um, an idea, there's cellular respiration, magnetism, pulley, chameleons, chariots, simple machines, African penguins, scientific method, dinosaurs, pendulums, rainforests, um, Greek invention, washing wounds, Elizabeth Blackwell, Galileo, silver, Japan's first inventions, forensics, beetles, purifying, coal, arctic, northern lights, El Nino and La Nina, a wide variety of topics, and same thing with 
social studies, everything from World War I refugees to Greek invention, colonization, um, Civil War, Great Wall of China, Henry the Navigator, Watergate, um, Keith Green, the submarines, the Wright brothers, Eleanor Roosevelt, Hinduism, God's plan through history, Henry VIII, um, Underground Railroad, Ethiopia, Jonas Salk, Mother Teresa, Alamo, Mongols, Again, a wide variety of topics. This is not a chronological history. This is a social studies curriculum. Um, well, I mean, it's the social studies part of it is pulled from inspiration from that Bible passage, whatever seems to go along with that. It's a wonderful, amazing curriculum. I highly recommend it. I absolutely love it. So if you have any questions, please let me know, and I will do my absolute best to answer them. Have a wonderful day.